In construction crazy China, thousands of welders go to work every day. These welders have a uniquely risky job. Just getting to work is an uphill struggle. Their job site. A dizzying 450 meters above ground. That's when their real job begins. Welding on top of the world brings a whole new set of challenges that steel supervisor Mr. Wang Shuha is only too familiar with. Among all the projects I've worked on, the tower's steel structure is the most complex and difficult. We need to protect the welding joints from wind and rain. What they're constructing is no ordinary building. The Guangzhou TV Tower. When it's finished, it will be the world's tallest TV tower and one of the tallest buildings in China. But it isn't the extraordinary height that keeps the construction team awake at night. Its design is like no other. It has a concrete core that rises to 450 meters. The core is enclosed by a giant steel lattice formed by 24 steel columns and 46 rings. The tower twists midway to form a waist, then widens in an oval at the top. The crowning glory is the TV tower's spectacular antenna, rising another 156 meters, taking the tower to 610 meters, the tallest of its kind on Earth. Its shape is so unique, it isn't covered by any conventional building code. They're boldly going where no builders have ever gone before. But that didn't stop architect Mark Hemmel, project manager Vincent Lam, and engineer Jackie Yao from taking up this crazy challenge just four years ago. I can still remember that sort of uh, sketches that the architect handed to me. When I start to thought, wow, it's nice cartoon and then how, I, how we are going to work on it. You're doing a project that, uh, uh, that is of a scale, of a size and of a complexity um, that nobody else uh, has done before. One day a crazy architect, he made a dream. The engineer is trying to make that dream to be realistic. Four years on and they're turning Mark's dream into concrete and steel. I think it's very nice like this, like this, uh, the fact that it's quite an open structure now, so you have a view still through the, over the whole city. For the last three years, architect Mark Hemmel has commuted regularly between his home in Amsterdam and the construction site in Guangzhou. He's just one half of IBA the architectural firm that conceived this design. The other half is Barbara Kut, Mark's partner in work and in life. They'd only been in business for five years when they decided to take on the big boys, competing for the job of a lifetime by designing the tallest TV tower in the world. I first heard about the competition and then I, I read and I, I heard that there was required a, a high tower in, in China and my first uh, thought was, well, that's, that's quite big. And she uh, 
said, uh, well, what do you think? Um, it's, it's nothing, isn't it? Uh, like, it's too big, too, too difficult. And I thought, like, no, no, we should do it. The winning design would have to make a powerful statement to the world. Situated in the southeastern province of Guangdong, Guangzhou is the third largest city in China, and it's the center of Chinese manufacturing. A thousand years ago, the port of Guangzhou sat on the trade route that linked East Asia with the Mediterranean. This was one of the first places in China where East met West. Today, Guangzhou has the economic might of a modern megacity, but has yet to reclaim its former glory. But that's about to change. 2004, the city wins the right to host the next Asian Games and takes on the mega challenge of a city-wide makeover that must be completed before the games begin in 2010. The jewel of that mega makeover will be an iconic high rise, a 21st century communications beacon. The Guangzhou TV Tower. Two years out from the games, the outer structure is almost complete. The steel lattice has reached the topmost ring. Only three more column sections need lifting into place. Each section is 11 meters long and weighs 25 tons like lifting 10 full-size pickup trucks. This is one of the last of the 1,104 column sections that make up the 24 giant columns. Positioning those columns is the most critical part of this job. Each column must be aligned correctly. Inside the column, worker Liu Chao fastens the brackets into place. There's no room for error, even a few millimeters off, and the whole tower could morph out of shape. surveyors guides the workers to ensure the section is precisely positioned. Burn inside. Burn it right now. Then the smoky part of Yu Chao's day begins as he welds the two sections together. When I first went inside a column, I was a bit scared. But after a while, I've got used to it. With the welding complete, Yu Chao makes his escape. Ten floors below, workers are assembling the steel floor. Because of the twist in the middle of this tower, every floor has different dimensions, so every floor beam and floor plate has been custom made. They work so efficiently, they finish one floor every five days. Five years ago, when the architects were competing for this job, the odds were stacked against a small firm like Mark and Barbara's. But that just drives them harder. They decide to give their design a twist. It's a very simple idea. You have the top and the bottom rotated. 
therefore you got by the effect was that you get like a tightening waist and we we like the form so much because it kind of reminds a little bit of uh, yeah of kind of fem it's more it looks more feminine it reminds a little bit of uh, of a dress of a woman but their clever design poses huge technical challenges to land the job they need the prestige of a big engineering firm behind them A friend introduces them to engineer Joop Paul, who works in Amsterdam for Arup, one of the biggest engineering companies in the world. It's like if you're not big, then you have to be clever. So we, we immediately asked as much help as we could. When I saw the model, I thought, wow, this is really cool. Yeah, this could be a real winner. But for this competition, it isn't just the technical details they have to master. They need to engage a Chinese audience to make something that will win over the people of Guangzhou. Mark hires Patty Liu as translator and cultural advisor. Tapping into the Chinese love of storytelling, she suggests writing a modern legend inspired by the tower itself. I suggested to Mark that I would write his beautiful architecture into the legend about a beautiful lady standing alongside the river, looking proudly and hopefully um, into the Pearl River and look far beyond the future of Guangzhou. Armed with the legend of the Lady of the River, the team works day and night. It's especially hard on Barbara, who is pregnant with her second child. When I'm focused, I'm not worried about anything else. I was just focused on the tower, focused on that we had this amazing chance and that we should go for it. Ju Yu Yong gets high every day he comes to work. He climbs a 50-meter ladder, an exhausting 15-minute journey, to the cab of the Favel Favco M900D tower crane. He's been at it for two years now, one of eight drivers he took special training to drive the crane. After decades of working with ordinary cranes, he's reached cloud nine. It was my first time to climb so high and on a crane so good. I was really proud. It's an Australian crane. And Australia is a great country, right? <laughs> By the time the tower is completed, the cranes will have lifted 650,000 tons of steel, enough to make 65 Eiffel Towers. This mega machine can lift 64 tons, making this one-ton floor beam a mere toothpick. It can take it all the way to the top in just 15 minutes. Normally, before I go to work in the morning, I don't dare drink much. Why? I'm afraid I'll need to pee. Ju Yu Yong hasn't always been this high. This crane can grow along with the tower. Powerful hydraulic jacks have pushed the 280-ton crane skyward, four floors at a time. As the concrete core grows at the brisk rate of one floor 